In this lesson, we are going to learn how to add and subtract rational expressions. Uh, this is in section 9.3 of your textbook on pages 721 and 722. And we're going to work problem numbers 2 through 28 even. Um, as a little bit of, river, of a review, we are um, used to rational expressions. We've talked about them a couple of times so far. Rational expressions. They are just a fancy way of saying we're going to be working with fractions. So when we're adding and subtracting rational expressions, that means that we're really going to be adding and subtracting fractions. So remember that the golden rule, whenever you are adding and subtracting fractions, you have got to have a common denominator. Remember your numerator is your top number like this 11 and 2, and your denominator is your bottom number, like that 3b to the third. So that bottom number down here, that does have to be the exact same in order for you to add or subtract. So um, on the directions, the they say perform the indicated operations and simplify your results. So since we do have a common denominator here, we can go ahead and combine the terms. So we will subtract 11 and 2 to get 9 and then you keep your same denominator to be 3b to the third. Okay, so that does not change. It stays as a 3b to the third. And remember they did tell us to simplify our results. So that 9 and that 3 can simplify to give us a 3 and if you want to write the 1 in front of the b to the third, then you can, but you do not have to. Okay, so your answer here would be 3b to the third power. Okay, moving on to problem number 4. You have 6 over 5x plus 3 minus 3 over 5x plus 3. So we notice that we do have a common denominator of 5x plus 3, so we can go ahead and subtract. 6 minus 3 is 3. Keep your same denominator of 5x plus 3. Now you may want to go ahead and move on and say that these 3's are going to simplify to be 1's, but that is not the case. You cannot simplify these because this 3 is being added to the 5x. We always like to say that that means that they're married. You cannot combine them. Only if you were multiplying could you have simplified these. For example, I'm going to do this in another color since it's an example. So let's say that we had 3 over 9 and then we had 5x plus 3. If that is the case, then the 3 and that 9 can cancel or simplify because that 9 is being multiplied by the 5x plus 3. But since this is being added, you cannot simplify it with what's up top. Okay, So please make sure you understand this. So for that reason, this is your final answer. You cannot simplify any further. Problem number 6. We have 6w divided by w plus 4 plus 24 divided by w plus 4. So we have our common denominator, so we're going to leave that alone. But we can go ahead and combine our numerators. So 6w and 24 are not like terms. They don't both have a w. So for that reason, we cannot combine them but we can still write them side by side. So now let's go ahead and simplify by factoring. We can factor that numerator and we can pull out a 6 which is our greatest common factor. So we get 6 times w plus 4. Notice how your w plus 4's will cancel leaving you with 6. Please do not leave your answer as 6 over 1. That is not all the way simplified. 6 is as simplified as it goes. OK, 
Okay, now let's move on to problem number eight. You have x squared over 4x minus 12 minus 9 over 4x minus 12. We have a common denominator, so we can go ahead and combine our numerators. Since they are not like terms, we write them side by side and rewrite our denominator. Now we can factor. Our numerator is a difference of squares, so that gives us x plus 3, x minus 3, and our denominator has a greatest common factor of 4, so we pull out that 4 and that leaves us with x minus 3. So our x minus 3's cancel, leaving us with x plus 3 over 4. Moving on to problem number 10, we have 3b minus 8 over b minus 6 plus b minus 16 over b minus 6. We have our common denominator, so we can go ahead and combine our numerators. So we are adding this 3b minus 8 and this b minus 16. So I'm going to put parentheses around them. It won't really make too much of a difference on problem number 10, but when you do problem number 12, you will notice what big difference it does make. So I'm going to rewrite my b minus 6. So in order to release these from the parentheses, we have to ask us ourselves two questions. One is, can I combine those terms? Two is, is there anything multiplying out front? So I cannot combine these terms because they're not like. There's nothing multiplying out in front, so that can be released to be a 3b minus 8. And then I can't combine these terms, nothing multiplying out in front, so I can release it from those parentheses. I'm going to say it again, it does not really make much of a difference on this problem, but it will on number 12, so make sure you use those parentheses. So now I'm going to combine my like terms in my numerator. 3b plus b is 4b, negative 8 minus 16 is negative 24 over b minus 6. Now, I factor my numerator. I take a 4 out and it leaves you with b minus 6. And we have our b minus 6. b minus 6 is cancel, leaving us with 4. Remember, do not leave it as 4 over 1. It is simply 4. Okay, now moving on to problem number 12. I have 5x minus 12 over x squared minus 8x plus 15 minus 3x minus 2 over x squared minus 8x plus 15. So we have a common denominator, so we can go ahead and combine our numerators. So remember, since there's more than one term, this is the difference. So notice on number 8, there was one term for this fraction in the numerator and one term up here. But notice on 10, there were two terms in the numerator. And here, there were also two terms. That's why we use those parentheses. So since there are two terms here, two terms here, we're going to use parentheses. Minus, and then 3x minus 2 all over x squared minus 8x plus 15. Okay, so now I can't combine these two terms and there's nothing multiplying out in front. So my 5x minus 12 is released and I can't combine these two terms. However, there is a negative 1 multiplying in front. 
Here it was just a positive, so it wouldn't have mattered. But here it's a negative 1, so you're going to have to distribute that negative 1 first. So negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. Negative 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2. All over x squared minus 8x plus 15. Now I can combine all of my terms in my numerator. So 5x minus 3x is 2x. Negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10. All over that same denominator. Now I factor. So I pull out a 2 to give me x minus 5 in my numerator. And then I use my AC method here to get x minus 3, x minus 5. So my x minus 5's cancel, leaving me with 2 over x minus 3. Now moving on to problem number 14, we have 4 over 5w minus 3 over 4w. So notice this is the first problem we have where there is not a common denominator. So we have to make them the same. So I have a 5w and a 4w. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my fractions. I know that my new denominator is going to have to have a w because they both have a w here. The only thing that's not the same is the 5 and the 4. So you've got to think to yourself, if I just had a denominator that had a 5 and a 4 only, then what would my common denominator be? That answer would be 20. Remember, you can always multiply those two denominators in order to get a common denominator. So now we look from, this is our first fraction, this is our first new fraction. So 5w to 20w, what did we do to 5w to get to 20w? The answer is we multiplied it by 4. So what we do to the bottom, we do to the top, which is going to make this new number a 16, because we say 4 times 4 is 16. Then, what did we do to 4w to get 20w? We multiplied it by 5. And what you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So 5 times 3 is going to give us a 15. So now, I have a common denominator, so it's just like problems 2 through 12 we did. We can go ahead and combine the numerators. 16 minus 15 is 1, and we have a 20w in our denominator. Okay, so now we are finished with number 14. So moving on to problem number 16. If we have number 16, we have 3 over p minus 7 over p squared. So to keep us from getting confused, I'm going to write the exponent of p as a 1 there, just so we can see what we have. So we have to get a common denominator. We have a p to the first and a p squared. Well, the only way that we can get a common denominator is by multiplying by a number. And when we multiply any variables, we know we're going to end up adding their exponents. So p squared means p times p. p to the first means simply p. So what can I do here to make it look like this one? All I have to do is do one more p. So it's still multiplication, but I'm adding one more p to the group, okay? 
So my common denominator here is going to be P squared. So to get my P to be a P squared, we just stated we're going to multiply it by P. So when I do that, I get a 3P here. And then P squared to P squared, we didn't change that denominator. It already had a common denominator for us. So we're going to leave that 7 alone. Now I put them over the same denominator of P squared. And since I can't combine 3P and 7, I'm just going to write them side by side. You cannot cancel these P's here because you are subtracting 7 from it. So since it's subtracting, you cannot cancel them. Remember, only if it's being multiplied can you actually simplify. So that means that you are finished with number 16. Now let's look at problem number 18. We have 5 over x plus 10 over y. So remember I stated earlier on problem number 14 that when you're not quite sure what your common denominator can be, you can always multiply them together to get a common denominator. So if we were to do that, then that would give us a common denominator of x, y. Okay, because remember if you have a letter next to another letter that means multiplication, so we just multiplied those two together. So we look from this first fraction to our first new fraction. The only thing that changed is we multiplied by a y. So that's going to give me a 5y as my new numerator there. Then the only thing I changed here, from here to here, is I multiplied by an x. So that's going to give me a 10x here. So now that I have a common denominator, I'm going to put my numerators over the same denominator. So that gives me 5y plus 10x over xy. So one thing we can still do is remember we always want to write our terms in alphabetical order. So that would give us 10x plus 5y over xy. One final thing we can do is we could pull out a 5, that's our greatest common factor, and give ourselves a 2x plus y over xy. So when we factored this, we still didn't have anything cancel because these can't cancel because they're being added. So for that reason, I would have accepted your answer to be either one of these. So it could have been 10x plus 5y over xy, or 5 open parentheses 2x plus y close parentheses over xy. So either one of them would have worked. Now moving on to problem number 20. We have 4 over 5x to the third minus 3 over 2x squared. So let's look. We have a 5 and 3x's. Over here, we have a 2 and 2x's. Two well, to solve the problem with the x's, we have 3 here and 2 here. So we can just multiply by one more x over here, and that carries the issue with the x's. That fixes that part. And then between the 5 and the 2, the common number would be 10. So we would multiply this side by 2 and that side by 5. So that's going to give us 
x to the third for my common denominator. So to make this a 10x to the third, all we did was multiply by 2. So 2 times 4 is 8. So that gives us an 8 for our new numerator. Then over here we multiplied by a 5 and an x. So 5x times 3 gives us 15x. So when we write those over the same denominator, we would get 8 minus 15x over 10x to the third. And to simplify or to write it in the correct form, you would always write the negative 15x first and then the 8. But for the purposes of this class, I probably would have accepted this one right here. However, the actual final answer would have been here. Problem number 22, 4 over C plus 3 over C plus 1. In my opinion, I think that this problem is the trickiest of them all. So you have a C and a C plus 1. A lot of you might guess that C plus 1 is the common denominator. But that is not correct. Because to make this a C plus 1, you would add 1 to the numerator and denominator. But you can't do that. Notice how the only way we're changing these fractions is by multiplying, okay? So we have to do this by multiplying. And remember, I told you that we can find a common denominator just by multiplying your denominators together. So that would give us C times C plus 1 because you have your C on the outside and then you have a binomial of C plus 1. So when you multiply them together, you can just write them side by side like that. So to make this C be a C times C plus 1, we multiply by C plus 1. So that gives us 4 and C plus 1. I do not recommend multiplying it out just yet. And then here, we would multiply by a C, which would give us a 3C. So now before I do any multiplying out, I'm going to go ahead and combine everything over the same denominator. So that gives me 4C plus 1 plus 3C over C times C plus 1. This is an extremely important note about this section. You cannot simplify until you've combined your entire numerator. Okay? I'm even going to write it down because it's so important. You cannot simplify until you have combined your entire numerator. Okay. Now the reason is because if I flip back to the other problems that we've done so far, then we stated that we could not simplify these threes up here because of that addition sign but we could simplify if they were being multiplied. So if we look back, notice how that C plus 1 is being multiplied by 4, but it's being added to the 3C. Because of that addition sign, that's why that C plus 1 cannot cancel. So before we can do anything, we've got to combine everything first. 
So I'm going to distribute my 4, which gives me 4c plus 4 plus 3c over c times c plus 1. Then I'm going to combine my like terms to get 7c plus 4 over c times c plus 1. And that is as far as we can go. Moving on to problem number 24. 4 over y minus 1 plus 2 over y plus 3. Okay. Remember, you can multiply your denominators together in order to get a common denominator. So we would have y minus 1 next to y plus 3. That's how we will get our common denominators by multiplying them together. So we're missing, we have a y minus 1, we're missing the y plus 3. So I would multiply this 4 by y plus 3. Remember, I'm not going to do it just yet. And then over here with the y plus 3, I still need the y minus 1. So I'm going to multiply that 2 by y minus 1. So now I'm going to write everything over the same denominator. Okay? So that gives me 4 y plus 3 plus 2 y minus 1 all over y minus 1 y plus 3. And if you have these switched, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. So remember, you cannot simplify until you have combined your entire numerator. You cannot simplify that y plus 3's and the y minus 1's because they're being added. So you have to distribute which would give you a 4y minus, I'm sorry, 4y plus 12 plus 2y minus 2 over y minus 1, y plus 3. Now we combine our like terms to get 6y plus 10 over y minus 1, y plus 3. The final thing we can do is factor. We can pull a 2 out to get 3y plus 5 over y minus 1, y plus 3. And notice nothing's going to simplify. Nothing cancels out. Now since nothing simplified here, I would accept either one of these answers. Okay, now moving on to uh, the next problem. It's going to be problem number 26, I believe. Yeah. So for 26, we have 4 over x plus 5 minus 3 over x minus 1. So our common denominator here is going to be x plus 5, x minus 1. So here we have an x plus 5, so we need an x minus 1. So that's going to give us 4 times x minus 1. Here we have an x minus 1, but we need an x plus 5. So I would give me a 3x plus 5. So now don't multiply anything just yet. Oops. 
Don't multiply anything just yet. We're going to go ahead and write everything over the same denominator. So I get 4 times x minus 1 minus 3 times x plus 5 all over x plus 5 x minus 1. So you cannot cancel anything yet because of that subtraction sign, okay? And I'm sorry if it's not high enough for you guys. Let me fix that. Because of that subtraction sign, you cannot cancel anything. So those x minus ones and x plus fives, they need to stay the same. And then you can cancel after you've simplified your entire numerator if possible. So you get four x minus four minus three x minus 15 and I get that because this is a negative 3 multiplying by those. All over x plus 5, x minus 1. So now I combine my like terms to be x minus 19. 4x minus 3x is x. Negative 4 minus 15 is negative 19 all over x plus 5, x minus 1. There's nothing we can do to simplify, so that is our answer. Now moving on to the final problem of this lesson, which is problem number 28. We have 3n over n plus 5 plus n over n minus 4. So our common denominator is going to be n plus 5, n minus 4. If you have them switched, it does not matter. So on the left side, we have an n plus 5, but we need an n minus 4. So that would be 3n times n minus 4. And then here we have an n minus 4, but we need an n plus 5. So we would have n and then n plus 5. So now we're going to put everything over the same denominator. So that would give me 3n times n minus 4 plus n times n plus 5 all over n plus 5 n minus 4. So you cannot simplify anything just yet because it's addition. You've got to combine everything in your numerator first. So 3n times everything in that parentheses and then n times everything in that parentheses. So we get 3n squared minus 12n plus n squared plus 5n all over n plus 5, n minus 4. Now you combine your like terms. 3n squared plus n squared is 4n squared and then negative 12n plus 5n is negative 7n over n plus 5 n minus 4 and then we can take it one step further by pulling out an n in the numerator to get 4n minus 7 over n plus 5 times n minus 4. So since nothing here will simplify, I will have accepted either one of these two answers since nothing simplified after you factored. I hope this lesson has helped you on adding and subtracting rational expressions, and I wish you the best of luck.